<clears throat> hey guys, what's going on? <laughs> um, I'm a big fan. Here, let me clean the lens off as I talk here. <clears throat> here we go. Anyway, I'm working on the 99 Tacoma today. Um, I was listening to Jordan B. Peterson, listening to his podcast and message to the truckers and his latest interview with uh, an old chap that's uh, from Newfoundland and also he's been in news and broadcasting for a long, long time in Canada. So he's uh, very intricately connected with, uh, you know, what's going on in the news in Canada and so forth. So... Uh, the one I was listening to is the couples conference and <clears throat> their relationship personalities and how it affects their, uh, you know, uh, they're doing the interview with their daughter. So they're asking their daughter how their, how mom and dad's personalities affected her growing up, her and her friends. <laughs> that's uh that's an amusing thing to watch. So, um, so I got the key on and, and, uh, well, my third light's on. The third light, the third light's sometimes on with the running lights. It's kind of had a wiring issue for a long, long time. The only thing I've ever done up there is uh, switch it over to LED bulbs. So I thought it'd be a wise idea to start underneath the dashboard. So since the time that I fired this truck up, uh, since the last month or so, I've been sitting inside. Sorry, I mean sitting outside the well so a couple things happen at once i got a little upset and washed it out and from that time the brake lights have been on all the time when the key's on so one other thing to be cognizant of is the you can go back and watch my video on the trailer tail light converter uh <clears throat> it's supposed to be a waterproof converter this is a powered converter so it's supposed to be able to take a small amount of signal uh bring it into the tail light converter and then add power from the battery to power probably a trailer with lots of lights something like that so my thinking is and okay let me finish this so there's a so all the wires from the cab to the tail lights feed into the converter and then they come out of the converter and they run into trailer tail lights so i've got trailer tail lights in the bumper um because the toyotas use a four i think it's a four wire they have they have brake and tail on one bulb, running lights on another bulb, and turn signals on a third bulb. So there's three bulbs and four wires. So this converts the converts it to use for a trailer. So basically, I'm using the trailer converter to power the tail lights, and the trailer converter being a powered converter also has one more wire that goes up to the battery so i ran that through a relay so that means when the key's on the converter's powered so it could be that the converter is shorted out internally and every time i turn on the key it sends power to the brake lights and it probably would back feed into the third light so all right and and another problem that just cropped up was nothing in the doors worked. No power. There was no more power to the door. So I actually got that fixed. So I could go and try and show you guys where it is. Uh, so let me, let's, let's explain this. So there's two big pins in here. They are not. They disconnect when the button's pressed. Okay. Then there's two more prongs in there, the smaller prongs. They connect when the button's pressed. So, 
and the contactors were shorted out there's a there's a long like a pen spring inside that pushes this plunger up so I actually stretch that out <clears throat> there's a set of sliding contactors that that run the smaller prongs so I got the switch functional again I can't reach in there and clean the I can't clean the so there's two steps or I can feel when it hits the contactor so basically it uses a bus bar to to make contact or is that backwards I think the button comes down and breaks the contactors on the bus bar right because it disconnects when it's down on, yeah, that's right. That's right. So the pin pushes and pushes the bus bar down and disconnects it. So raising the spring pressure, I think the raising the spring pressure actually doesn't do anything for the bus bar. Well, it would keep the button from putting weight on the bus bar. So as far as I know, now I've gotten to where the where it's contacting again so it could be possible that it runs a relay or some other thing to where when the power gets broken the lights come on that would work as a sort of a safety default that means when the switch goes bad or there's a broken wire or there's a broken relay well I mean not the relay but the tail lights would come on in an event of a fault so let's flip the camera around now and then we'll show you guys what i'm doing um i'll show you i'll try and show you where we need to go well i'm not going to flip the camera around because if i have it this screen i can see what you guys are seeing so i'm going to face this away so i have taken out the floor sill the melon baller and the quarter quarter panel panel so <clears throat> here's some of the extra wiring i run to um that's probably the power wire for the tail light converter so if you look here well get a piece of cardboard down here to knee one Oh, it's already all wet. Well, mostly all wet. So. Down here on the floor. Oh, well, you can't see because you're looking at the switches. So down here is a connection I made that uh, gave me power back to my door. And then there was a relay attached right about here. That would be this guy right here. So one of the, so that relay turns on the power for the doors. So one of the big wires is corroded off of there. So I broke them off down here and put them up, up there, their way. So that way if the cab's full of water again. So there was a ton of corrosion and whatnot in there. <clears throat> There's a bunch of corrosion on the back of a bunch of these connectors. So <coughs> hopefully that'll help. All right. Let me stick my head in here again. I don't think... There we go. So I guess this is supposed to be... It's supposed to be like that. I'm not sure.
can't really make out a whole lot. Ah, uh, this is right here is probably going to be the right angle. So, yep. There we go. This, is, this might be it right here. Oh, yeah. There's the click. The old 14 mil up in there. camera quit anyway i hope you can see what was going on and you know you at least know what the switch looks like and it's a little bit hard to get in there get the plug off and whatnot but that's your switch and that's uh how to get to all right guys thank you all right guys we're back from town i got bulk dielectric grease some ultra black for the forerunner so, um, brake light switch for the Tacoma, another brake controller, and another tail light converter. So, first thing we need to do, install the switch, and then see, see what happens. I mean, the third light worked, the third light, the third light worked before, but, uh, the the bigger pins there the contactor seemed like they had a little bit of trouble with uh, a little bit blackened and so forth on the one pin i noticed so and you can't get in there with anything maybe a flat screwdriver but if she's shot she's shot and if this switch were shorted out that might put some stress on the controller so my idea is spend the twenty dollars and fix it right so not 300 like I was afraid of, so we got some Wendy's. Uh, <clears throat> I used to do food delivery for Wendy, so I figured out you can get a five dollar biggie bag and then throw in a throw in the frosty chino, so you get you know about two turds of a stomach full, and uh, so. I didn't find the powered converter, and I think Kurt, I might have a Kurt converter. Well, it's always a good idea to check the box. So, according to this, she's made in Mexico by Kurt Group. Let's see if we can find some stains in the hands here um, trying to find the bottom of the back of the page see if we can find some some dirty stains usually it'll say Hopkins somewhere so maybe maybe this really is built by Kurt Also assembled in Mexico. This is the cheapest pouch plastic garbage I've ever seen. No D dent. No D dent. It just flops back and forth. And then I don't see an LED readout, so it must be it's on this little curved piece of plexi here, so. The other one I popped apart and it had rust on the circuit board uh, when I looked last night. So, guys, this is the stuff we need to get started. First thing is uh, replace the switch. So, I think I did a video on that last night. <clears throat> it's very, very hard to do. This truck's unthawed. It's 50 degrees out and our snow is pretty near gone. There's one stripe of snow right down toward the, toward the barn out there. We've gotten some snowmobile stuff painted. I guess that's beside the point. Uh, I don't know what else to tell you guys, except I'm going to get in there and check it out. I want this truck back on the road, so... <clears throat> ah, let's just back away from that. So... Ah, oh, shucks. 
I fixed the third light, put some new bulbs in it, and I used this big fat tube of dielectric grease to uh, grease up the bulbs. So here's the two bulbs that are bad. One was blinking pretty bad, and the other one was just dead. So I apparently got a hold of some better bulbs. I put the two better ones on the outside and the older one on the inside. Gave them some dielectric grease, put them in. I got the brake switch in. I I uh, took the took one of my pry bars and put it on the brake pedal. Put it against the front of the seat. Slid the seat forward. That's a pretty good trick to do. I just slid the seat back because it's getting ready to solder. So <clears throat> I'm gonna want these. I'll see if I can put this bracket in. The cool thing is I can use this wrench to get these screws in. So that means I can't get a screwdriver in because I'm trying to get this into the cubby where the brake or the e-brake handle is. So before I just had it setting on top. <coughs> uh, here's the old one. It's just sitting on top like that. So this time I might be able to screw it against the side here or something different. I could flip that up like that or something. Um, we'll have to see what we can do. So I cut the harness off. And I think the circuit board's labeled so I can use those labels to help me find my way around the, the car, coloring of the harness. Actually, they're the same. I'll just have to double check where they go. <clears throat> Sorry, I got hiccups. Too much fast food. So, uh, man, maybe I am on crack. <laughs> I was looking at this, I'm like... Well, I'm, I'm, I'm on crack, but I've got my life figured out. <laughs> uh, I would never do drugs like that. So, thankfully, let's come up here and I'll show you a little bit more what's going on. Um, I didn't even, so, so this wire is presumably going to the brake controller. And now that I'm taking a moment to think about it, I remember that I should have tested it with the continuity tester laying right here from last night when we were doing continuity tests. So <clears throat> the tail light converter is hooked up again. So what I did is I I unhooked the tail light converter and then I went and I realized that the the third light's on. So Obviously, it's not the brake converter if the third light's on, so that means there's only one thing left that could be sending power to the third light, and that's this guy. This is the brake controller. So, <clears throat> well, I, sh I should probably check and make sure it's the brake controller, but uh, let's just turn this on. I think the probe... I don't know. I thought that usually beeped, but the so let's let's give it a poke. Um, that black wire going in there is going to be the uh, dun 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 black actually. Yep, <clears throat> that's the right sound. So I guess it was the converter. <clears throat> Which the slider is your is connected to your button, your squeeze button, like this. So having it all the way over, of course, would make my third light be on. So, and it was all the way over. It was all the way over all night, ever since I broke it in half. So, I guess I wrecked it. Well, I could probably put a zip tie around it and hold the two halves together. So, but now I cut the wire. So now we've done cross the creek. So. It would be cool to use that Kurt converter in the Forerunner. That way we'd both have trailer brakes. But that would also mean I need to put the 7-pin thing in there. So I think we're just going to tow this truck. 
as long as I have this truck, I'll be fine, right? Because I'll just tow with this, but I don't have anything that's got trailer brakes, and my cousins are all the way across the, the lake, so, well, around the end of the lake, so I'm not doing too much, or I haven't been towing anything for them anyway, so, but if I do need it, I'll have this truck. I have a feeling the Forerunner would tow better than we have discussed in the past, about doing single axle camper delivery with it but now our family outgrew the vehicle so that's sort of off the you know off the agenda now until we get you know maybe a power stroke van like we've been looking at today or a land cruiser or a i would prefer to keep a toyota i'd like to explore toyota and become very uh proficient and well versed in toyota stuff so my goal is to explore this platform. Now, everybody else, they do the, 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 the OEM or the domestic stuff. So nobody does anything with these. So I'll be the guy that does. I mean, Toyotas are supposed to re be reliable. I don't see how this is a bad choice on my part. Unless, of course, I do need to tow excavators and forklifts and skid loaders, in which case, of course, I could also choose to buy a power stroke, which I would probably do, because I'm a great fan of power stroke. I'm a farm all guy dyed in the blue. I really have no other interest, <clears throat> you know, except maybe Kubota, because they're Japanese, and kind of links into Toyota and back into Cub Cadet, because Cub Cadet use power plants from Kubota or even... Uh, Oh, what's the other one? Mitsubishi. I think International had Mitsubishi make a line. So Japanese and International does have a little bit to do with each other and so forth. So I don't I don't know. Um, now you kind of know. I love Toyotas, but I was an international guy. So ha having a truck with an international Andrew would be the cream on the cake or the pie or whatever you put the cream on or the coffee. Um, you know, except where they have lots of troubles like the 6.0, which is great because I can buy one cheap, but it's also not so great because if I don't, um, behave myself properly, I could have a whole stream of blown up power strokes, you know, so to me, a power stroke is an, is an investment of my money, of my time, of my attention, of, you know, my gas fund and so forth, so... Um, when I do get one, I want to get a nice one. <clears throat> I want to keep it nice, make it really nice, make it something special, and keep it a long time. So that means I'm in the ballpark of this stuff now. I had a rusted Suburban once. And having something that's not enjoyable to me, that's not exciting to me, is not going to be fun. So... Hey, I think I hear, I think I hear Reed come up the driveway. <clears throat> so I enjoy the Tacoma. It's a very magical experience to run it around. So I'm going to continue. I already own this truck. I've already made it nice. And I'm just going to keep on going in that direction. So guys, let's get into the next thing. Get this Kurt controller in. The thing is absolute garbage. You got a thing here, no dent, slides, it's all scratchy and it'll probably wobble around. But this has got rust. So guys, we're going to throw this right in. Alright guys, it's time to get this uh, video wrapped up here. I wanted to show you the, the third lights. Oh, just going to climb up here. How nice is that? <laughs> Doesn't really show up, but it's sort of a three distinct, sort of a three distinct um, bulbs. You can see. I don't think you can see it on the screen. Anyway, so I got the key on. I got my little prop in there. So let's take the prop out. It's probably not so good for the seat. All right. <coughs> no more light up there. That's good. That means we're not shorted out anymore. 
turn signal. I'll show you guys the funny turn signals. I put LED flashers in here a little while ago. I got a video on that. Oh, no way. Now they're flashing uh, in unison, right? That is so weird. That's so weird, man, because before I switched the brake controller, they would flash opposite. All right, so let's go running lights. Mint. They're all there. Even the old, what's it called? License lights there. Um, We could do the reverse lights and see what that's like. That's a uh, Cub Cadet lawn tractor or garden tractor lift handle. <clears throat> somebody broke the shift. Uh, somebody broke the plastic inside the shifter, so I uh, rubber hose clamped the rubber to the to the stick. And then after a while, I'm like, "Hey, a lawn tractor's got a button in the middle. I'll just use that." So. <laughs> Ever since then, it's been a lawnmower handle, which I guess wouldn't be okay if it wasn't for an old power trash truck. It needs to be vacuumed out. Speaking of vacuum, it needs a throttle body fix. So here's a new controller. I think if I go on the brakes. Yeah, if I go on the brakes, I get a green LED, and then I get the same when I squeeze the button. So I got the little card, little quick reference card stuck in there so I can know what it's supposed to do, but that's meant. That means I can pull a trailer with brakes, which is just about... It's just about uh, it's just about a handful for this little truck. Uh, my cousin has a tandem axle, uh, like a landscaping utility trailer, and that's pretty light. So I used it to move all the stuff here. I probably was pretty close to five thousand pounds, which really made this truck fight. So. We just traveled at 35 and 40 miles an hour. Just, hey, if you got stuck behind me, you just have to figure something out, take a different route or pass. So that's how we did it. So guys, that's a successful fix. So the apparently the brake controller was sending a short, shorting out, um, or uh, uh, what do you call it when a power box has stray voltage? basically sending stray voltage or uh, i'm not sure i'm just gonna go with stray voltage sending stray voltage up to the tail light here and somehow these weren't lit but the brake third light was lit with the running lights and a bunch of crazy stuff we could check it again and see if the third light is on with the running lights but Nope, third light's not on. And the running lights are. Oh yeah, by the way, if I turn on the running lights without turning the key on, I get this. That's because the tail lights are powered through the tail light converter, and the running lights and turn signals, the orange turn signals, bypass the converter box. So, in any event. I, I might lose brake lights, but I'll still have running lights, turn signals. Yeah, running lights and turn signals. So, <laughs> I'm not, so if I plug the trailer in, I don't think it would have any tail lights right now. So, I got to have the key on. So, that's okay. That's because it's powered by the relay up here under the hood. So, if I'm sitting in a parking lot wanting to have some lights on just to, just to show that there's somebody in the truck, whatever, parked on the side of the road. I can have the key out and just click that on, and that could run for probably days or weeks. 
So, I need a way to keep from getting rear-ended while stuck, broken on the side of the road or whatever. <clears throat> Not that that has ever happened. Well, yeah. I did split a brake rotor once, so that, that happened. I'm lucky I'm still here. Very fortunate. Alright guys, so that is the, that's how we fix that. And we did the brake, the brake, uh, the brake, the brake switch. Yeah, the brake pedal switch. We did that as well. Just to be sure that our brake converters are living the best life they can possibly live. And with that, guys, also the the LED flasher under the dash is going to slow down the cycle times for the converter. So the converter, technically if the converter cycles half as often, it'll live twice as long. So hopefully that'll stay true. And hopefully having a quality, uh, it's not a Hopkins, I don't think it's a Kurt, I think it's a, I think it's a Reese, Reese converter this time around. Hopefully that'll help us with our, um, oh, what are they called? Dying at birth issues, so. Thanks for watching, guys. We will see you in the next one.